out there in the world of boxing, they think that the real threat and danger to Riddick Bowe is only Riddick Bowe himself, which is a kind of a backhanded compliment, saying that at his best, Riddick Bowe is the best heavyweight out there. And hell's bells, when are we going to see that best once again? The boxing world is saying to Riddick Bowe, do it, kid. We don't expect you to subsist on beetles and leaves like Captain O'Hara. We just don't want to see the bigger and not better Riddick Bo. The world is saying to Riddick Bo, stop acting out your frustrations by hitting people after you knock them down or before the fight begins. And the boxing world is also saying to Riddick Bo, start fighting some opponents who bring out the best and not the worst in you. And Gonzalez just may be that guy. Well said, because uh, to underline the point, the biggest challenge facing Riddick Bo tonight might not be the question of how good Jorge Luis Gonzalez is, but the bigger question of how good Riddick Bo is. And can he ever again be as good as he was in November of 1992 when he lifted the heavyweight title from Evander Holyfield? He's looked bad in recent outings and against questionable opposition. So what's wrong with a Riddick Bowe who two years ago was clearly the best fighter in his division? We asked Teddy Atlas, Michael Moore's trainer, Kevin Rooney, Vinny Pazienza's trainer, and Gil Clancy, former trainer of welterweight champion Emil Griffith, to analyze the differences in Bo between when he fought Evander Holyfield for the title and the way he's looked against recent opponents. See how Bo comes right back punching? He's the last one to punch. Watch, he comes right back. Hollyfield throws the left, the right. Bo comes right back. He doesn't allow Hollyfield to get into a groove of confidence. See what Bo's doing here? He's creating openings. This is his first fight back after losing his title to the guy he took it from, Hollyfield. But he's 12 pounds heavier than he was when he took the title from Hollyfield when he was 235. Here tonight, he's 247. 235 was good then. Why wouldn't it be good now? fought the best fight of his life at that weight. But you could see Bo's temperament now, his, his attitude is to look for the right hand. I mean, it sure as hell looks that way to me. I don't know about you guys, but I don't remember seeing Bo, I don't think one time, trapped on the ropes in a Hollyfield fight. He's not using what he has right now. I think that's the biggest, I don't think, I think it's a fallacy that people think that technically he's dissipated or that, uh, you know, he's dissipated uh, in, in physical ways. I mean, his weight going up is more an indication to me that's something he has control of. That's not something that Father Time did. That's not something that nature did. That's something that he allowed to happen because of his lack of desire. Right here, Riddick Boss should be moving him. Just push him a little bit and step around him and stay on the outside using that good left hand he has. He's got a long reach. Right here, he should be popping. See that? He pops it and it works. Jabs to the body, keeps the man off him. Showing a lot of heart in this fight, Riddick Bowe. Now we're going to watch Riddick Bowe against Larry Donald. And he seems like he's just missing that little step. I mean, he's not right on a guy like he was in that first Evander Holyfield fight. In spots here, he shows that he still has the ability, but here now he's, you know, into this faking and fronting which is amateur stuff. He's a little wild now. He's not putting combinations together. He backs out and talks to him, and there's nothing going on. He didn't cut the, cut the ring off and fire. He didn't, he didn't say, come on, let's go, let's fight, like he did in the Holyfield fight. If he had done that, he probably would have knocked you know, Larry Donald out. He didn't do that. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't dictate the pace. He allowed, he allowed the pace to be dictated to him, and that's a mistake. You can see Bo keeping his composure, working behind that left hand, not throwing any wild punches. And you can see still bouncing on his legs, a little bounce on those legs in the 12th round of a tough fight like that. That's remarkable. Now let's take a look at Riddick Bo against Herbie Hyde in his most recent fight. You can see he's standing there. He just doesn't seem to be interested, not really too animated. In the fight against Holyfield, he kept using that left jab, setting up everything with the left jab, was able to throw short combinations. Up to this point, we haven't seen anything but a feint from Riddick Bowe. Here's another one, just a feint. There, finally, throws a left jab. 
walking in the same motion, just marching in. You can actually count the rhythm as he marches in. He's doing the same thing over and over, Riddick Bo. No bounce in the legs. He's shuffling forward. I think what happened to uh, Riddick Bo is I think that gradually uh, Eddie Futch lost control of him. And when Eddie first took him over, he was the Riddick Bo that you saw in the Herbie Hyde fight. But Eddie really worked with him, kind of taught him how to fight inside, improved his jab, improved his defense. But as uh, Riddick Bo won each f fight, he started to erode a little bit, and certain things that Eddie would tell him uh, just went in one ear and out the other. And you could see the tremendous difference between the Bo and the Holyfield fight and the Bo and the Herbie Hyde fight. We bring you back live to ringside at the MGM Grand Garden, where in just a few minutes, Riddick Bo will enter the ring for his fourth fight since the loss to Evander Holyfield in their second battle. This time, the opponent is Jorge Luis Gonzalez, a man who won the World Amateur Heavyweight Championship eight times when fighting under the banner of Castro's Cuba. Larry Merchant, uh, we mentioned the pre-fight build-up, bluster, and uh, all of the give and take that caused the Nevada State Athletic Commission to separate the two fighters. A lot of people may wonder what the heck that's all about. A lot of boxing fans may be saying to themselves, who is Jorge Luis Gonzalez, and why does he say all those awful things about Riddick Bo? Well, first of all, what we do know about him as a fighter is that he was an outstanding amateur. He defeated the last four Olympic champions in the super heavyweight divisions, and he also defeated a silver medalist named Riddick Bo. What we also know is that he has been spewing so much venomous tes testosterone that he's really going over the top even for boxing, which is saying a great deal. He is a natural born villain, of course, born with that black hat, but he has also been urged on by the MGM Grand Hotel, which not only promotes Somewhere Over the Rainbow and The Wizard of Oz, but they also promote Gonzalez. One, in, one MGM executive says, hate sells tickets. Well, if you look over my shoulder, you may notice that it hasn't sold too many tickets tonight. But maybe it'll give us a good fight, Jim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, a lot of the bluster has to do with a fight that took place eight years ago, and that was a pretty good one. It was the semifinal of the 1987 Pan Am Games, and in that fight, Jorge Luis Gonzalez emerged with a 3-2 decision victory over Riddick Bowe and knocked Bowe to the canvas twice. Now, Gonzalez and his manager, Luis de Cubas, love to say that this gives Jorge a big psychological advantage. Does that really mean something coming into tonight's fight, George, or is it ancient history? Well, you'd like to put it behind you, especially the guy who was knocked down, uh, who got the knockdowns, because the guy kept getting up. You don't want a guy to remember that you hit him with your best, and he kept getting up, and then he started to chase you some more. So as a, as a rule, in my mind, it should figure better for Riddick Bowe. It's a plus for him it's then that he can for him. remember. Sure, you hit me with good right hand. Sure, you knocked me down. But what happened then? You ran from me. So that that probably works in uh, Riddick Bowe's uh, favor. That it'll be interesting to see if at the end of the evening Gonzalez regrets having made such a big deal about it in these past three months. Well, whatever happens tonight, it's the culmination of a quest that began for Gonzalez in 1991 when he became the first famous amateur athlete in Castro's Cuban social sports machine to defect and leave Castro's Cuba behind. Right now, I'm here at this gym, and you start jerking me around. I feel a hatred, a tremendous amount of hatred towards you. If it weren't the present time, if we were living in the Roman times, I would have killed you right there and then because of a dirty look that someone gives me with uh, jealousy. Jorge Gonzalez, nurtured on hatred, grew up in these ramshackle streets of Cuba. Fighting for Fidel Castro's boxing empire, Jorge beat Lennox Lewis and Riddick Bowe in the 1987 Pan Am Games. But the fury in this six foot seven inch giant could not be contained by dictatorship. In 91, Gonzalez defected to the U.S. Everyone is always budding in your life. You can't be an individual. If you want to do anything, you have to ask the authorities and they tell you what to do. When I was among these people in Cuba, I felt so much hatred that it's unexplainable. So much hatred that I wanted to kill people at times. I like to do things my way. That's why I decided to leave my country. Dressed all in black under the blazing desert sun, 
Jorge burns with pride for his newfound freedom and his undefeated record, 23 wins, 20 KOs. Gonzalez believes freedom is worth not seeing his family. He left an entire life behind in Castro's Cuba. I'm a person who likes risk in my life. All risks are victories to me. I'm a person who lives without emotion. So what emotion there is comes from these risks. Leaving Cuba and leaving my family, these things are risk and are not difficult. These things are, are easy for me. It's also easy now for Jorge to let people know how he feels. He speaks freely, tapping into the rage he's known since childhood. I'm not nasty, but when someone is nasty, I'm nasty right back. If you're a decent person, I'm a decent person with you. But if you're a jerk, I can be a jerk too. In the ring is a different story, because in the ring, I'm bad with everyone. You're my enemy, you want to kill me, I want to kill you. That's why I fight. Gonzalez has proven he's bad with everyone in the ring. Instead of knocking his opponents out early, Jorge toys with his enemies, standing with his hands by his waist, taunting them with the little English he knows. Come on. Come on. Come on. And the crowd usually boos. I love it when the audience starts to boo me. It riles me up even more. I'm the type of person that if I know that I rub you the wrong way, I'm going to do something to piss you off even more. If you don't like the way I laugh, I'm going to laugh louder just to piss you off. And Gonzalez has certainly succeeded in pissing off Riddick Bowe. This hatred comes from 87 during the Pan American Games when he started with the same talk as he did for this fight. The old hatred I have bottled up, that fury from the past has surfaced again and is directed towards Riddick Bowe. Come on! Come on! One punch! One punch! No complaining, man! No complaining! Bitch, be cow. You choose a hard make you cow. He can keep talking, singing like a bird, like a boy, like Muhammad Ali. When I get finished with him, I'm gonna have him wishing he was back in Cuba. I'm not a poet, I'm a man of action, and I'm going to destroy him. When I hit you, what's worth more? The talk or the punch? It's obvious Jorge's years of living in Cuban obscurity took their toll, but he now believes he was born with a rough attitude. This is my nature. I'm a loner. I was born this way. When I hate someone, I sleep, I dream with that feeling, and I can't change it. It's impossible. But it's almost impossible to believe a man can hate so much. Is Jorge Luis Gonzalez for real? Tonight, his chance to prove it to Riddick Bowe and the people in this country but more importantly, to prove it to the people of Cuba. And we bring it back live to ringside where both of our taped features were distributed via the public address system to the audience here. They watched on big screens around the arena, but while that was going on, Bo's manager, Rock Newman, was doing business. He stepped into the ring to argue with the Nevada State Athletic Commission that the upper ring ropes were way too loose. Now, yesterday I spoke to Eddie Futch, trainer of Riddick Bowe, who said he was certain that Gonzalez would try to lean back across the top rope of the ring and try to make Bowe chase him from a long distance as he leaned away from him. So it's undoubtedly part and parcel of that expectation that Brock Newman went into the ring and got the Nevada State Athletic Commission to tighten the top rope, try to keep Jorge Luis Gonzalez a little bit closer toward the middle of the ring even when he leans back tail of the tape and you can see that for the first time in his professional career riddick bow goes into the ring against a bigger man gonzalez is taller at six feet seven has one inch reach advantage bow typically outweighs gonzalez by six pounds larry bow looks as fit or fitter than at any time since the first fight with holyfield perhaps we can attribute that to the fact that uh, he gave up the idea of putting a kitchen in his bedroom and put a gym in his backyard instead. Punch stat numbers, Larry. <laughs> Here are our punch stat numbers to give you an idea of how active these fighters are, but keep in mind that these numbers were, uh, were uh, assembled against completely different kinds of oppositions. Gonzalez fighting a lot of fighters who were, who were as anonymous going in as they were coming out, uh, Bo fighting a higher caliber of fighter. And, and jabs, look at this, uh, a remarkable statistical coincidence. Both have big jabs. 
punishing jabs when they use them correctly. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Riddick Bow Jorge Luis Gonzalez fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you can be saved by the bell only in the last round. Jim. Beautiful, Harold. And now let's see if Jorge Luis Gonzalez is going to wear that black cowboy hat into the ring. All right, there's the first answer of the evening. He will. In his last fight, on March 11, on the undercard of Bo Hyde, Gonzalez knocked out a fighter named Brian Scott in the second round. Scott had just gotten married in one of those Las Vegas wedding chapels the evening before, and as he crumpled to the canvas, his brand new wife leaned up on the ring oak apron and took snapshots of his bloodied face. <laughs> it was quite a moment. A memorable snapshot for their, for their golden year. There's a good reason Gonzalez is wearing his hat, I assume, because he's had a bad hair life. With plenty of life yet to come. First attempt to step over the ring ropes is unrequited. On his second try, Gonzalez makes it in. And you see the blue Reyes gloves that both fighters will be wearing tonight. What's the reason that they're blue? No particular reason. They just are. There's Gonzalez's record, 23 wins, no losses, 22 KOs. Probably the biggest name fighter he's been in the ring with was Ronaldo Snipes. I wonder if it's relevant that uh in his amateur career, he lost eight fights by disqualification. Bound to be relevant to something. He also had 169 KOs in 220 amateur fights with the opponents wearing headgear. So he does have heavy hands. I, I will say this. Well, well, we'll wait a while while we watch Riddick Bo walk to the ring. Saunter. He's going to saunter to the ring. He is, as you can see, he's worked up a sweat. He does have the look of somebody who is eager to get at what he's going to get to. Yeah, he looks engaged tonight. The odds on this fight, incidentally, opened at 4-1 to one for Bo. They closed at somewhere around 12 or 13-5. to five. A lot of people betting on Gonzalez late in the going. Legendary 83-year-old trainer Eddie Futch precedes Bo into the ring. Incidentally, uh, someone in the Marine Corps has uh, called us to uh, correct me on Scott O'Grady. I said Scott O'Hara. I misspoke myself. My apologies. <laughs> to the O'Grady family. John O'Grady, right? Yeah. It's, it's John O'Grady. But we understood the point. All right, they're both in there, and they're being kept separated from one another. You look at Riddick Bowe's record, 36 wins. The one loss, a razor-thin decision to Holyfield in the second fight. 30 KOs for Bowe. And right now, let's go on up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the featured bout of the evening as Spencer Promotions. The MGM Grand and your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser, this Bud's for you, present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO World Heavyweight Championship. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman Dr. James Nave, Commissioners Luther Mack, Nat Carasali, Dr. Elias Ghanem, and Crispin Rivera, Executive Director Mark Ratner. Physicians at ringside, Chief Physician Dr. James Wish Game. Attending physicians, Dr. William Berliner and Dr. Robert Voy. The timekeeper is Al Bicic. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Jane Broadfoot. This bout is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization. President Francisco Barcarcel. Supervisor at ringside for the WBO, George Cristadulo. The scoring will be done on a 10 point must system, and the three judges are Dwayne Ford. Chuck Jumper and Jerry Roth. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action referee, Mills Lane. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the world's largest hotel, casino, and theme park, the MGM Grand of Las Vegas. Uh, let's get
introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, trimmed in gold and weighing 237 pounds. He's a native of Cuba, who now lives and trains right here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and has a professional record of 23 consecutive victories without a loss. He scored 22 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the number one ranked heavyweight challenger in the world, the undefeated Jorge Luis Gonzalez! And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with blue and weighing 200. 43 pounds. He comes to us from Brooklyn, New York. This 1988 Olympic medalist now has a professional record of 36 victories, 30 by knockout against only one defeat, and he has captured two world championships. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning WBO World Heavyweight Champion. So don't worry about it. All right, wait a minute. Okay, all right. Wait a minute. Step aside here, okay? All right. Step aside. All right, if he goes right here, I'm going to call it all right. You understand that? It's going to be a little fight right here. And we've already gone We've already gone through all the instructions in the dressing room. I expect a tough, clean fight. Put, hey, listen, man, put your hands down. I expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions here? Any questions here? Let's get it on! There's enough bad blood between these fighters to start an epidemic. Let's see if it starts a fight. Generally, when there's a lot of smoke, there's just a whole lot more smoke. <laughs> As a rule. Well, I think if nothing else, Gonzalez has gotten Bo's attention. Huh? Good phrase, Larry. It's like he got halfway to being George Foreman and just couldn't bring himself to go all the way. Ready here? All right, here we go. They begin round one, and let's see if Bo wants to brawl or box. Both fighters starting out with the jab. What happened to all that fire that was supposed to happen? This day? Filling it out, out. Well, Gonzalez is a fighter who doesn't like to come forward. He's uncomfortable oh, oh, oh. doing hey, so. Hey, hey. So, hey, Eddie Futch said to me yesterday, George Riddick's going to have to make the fight. He's going to have to go forward and pressure Gonzalez. They believe that Jorge Luis Gonzalez has never been pressured in his 23 pro fights, and he'll see something entirely different tonight. Big right hand over the top by Bo, glancing blow. Oh, oh, hey. One thing about it, Gonzalez has had knockouts, but he never had a knockout from long range. He wants you to come to him, and he throws short punches. He doesn't take advantage of his ex superior reach. Hey, 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 hey. Bo should hey, not hey, follow hey, this guy hey, to the rope. Hey. He throws short punches for a guy with long arms. But, but Bo thinks he's better off inside because he's such a good inside fighter for a big guy, George. No, but he is not. This guy has an amazing reflexes, Gonzalez, and the issue with short chopping punches. Do you think the counter-punching style could really operate to Gonzalez's advantage? Hard right hand by Bo. Gonzalez wobbled into the ropes. Riddick working inside where he wants to be. Now Gonzalez leans on him against the ropes. Greg Payne, an American amateur, is the only man, according to Jorge Luis Gonzalez, who ever knocked him down. But he's on the verge of going down right now as Riddick Bowe deals the right hands in round one. Riddick Bowe doing an excellent job, but you just don't want to follow a puncher. This guy can throw one of those wild looping punches and drop you. Time to work his left jab. Gonzalez, like I said, wherever there's a lot of smoke, generally there's a whole lot more smoke somewhere else. 
Gonzalez may or may not have his legs back. Bo looking for a way to walk inside again. Lands the left jab, just misses the right hand behind it. Gonzalez ties him up. Now there's a hard right by Gonzalez, but Bo comes right through it. Bo's had a hard time throwing that overhand right for smaller guys, but it seems that Gonzalez is right there for those right hands. Overhand right. Eddie Futch told Bo, when you get Gonzalez to the ropes, forget about his head and go to the body. They don't want to give Gonzalez an opportunity to counter coming off the ropes. Hard right hand coming up and under by Jorge Luis Gonzalez. Really, Bo should make this boy get out in the middle of the ring. He's had more success out there. You lay on the ropes, you're going to do what this guy does. He just sits back there and waits to chop you with the right hand. Rough first round for Gonzalez, but he survives it and keeps firing at the end. Now we'll see a smile from Gonzalez's face. What about the fire? Garcia, what's going on in Gonzalez's corner? Where do you want me to come? Give him one. He's, he's, he's over. It's okay. It's okay. He's okay. It's okay. George Foreman was exactly correct. The right hand has never been the most impressive punches in, in Bo's arsenal, but against a taller opponent, it is being effective. In round one, Bo landed 13 of 16 jabs, 81%. So he's got an inviting target when he throws the jab. Now Gonzalez starts out with his own jab in round two. Bo was wasting a lot of energy and didn't get a finish. Now Gonzalez backs up, uses left jab, invites Bo to come on in. Pretty soon you're going to see Bo tremble a little bit with right hand. Yeah, but Riddick is clocking Gonzalez with that jab. I mean, he snapped Jorge's head back twice more in this round. And now Riddick pulls Gonzalez into the ropes. Come on, Riddick. Step back. Keep the punches up. Come on. Bo is following this puncher. You never follow a puncher. You don't stand up there and make him think about throwing a good shot. When you step back, come on. Hey, hey, hey. Both of you. Hey, come on. Both of you knock that off. Come on. Right hand lead for Gonzalez. Two hands are free in there. He seems to remember to throw the jab in the first 30 seconds of each round and then forgets about it from that point forward. allowing Gonzalez to lean on the back of his neck and when you're throwing hard shots that starts to wear you down a lot more than you need to be worn down. Will Mills Lane take oh, care of that for him? I don't think so. Mills Lane is thinking hey as long as they're covered up I don't have to jump in there. Bo is falling for the wrong thing. So you're saying that even though Riddick is dominating the fight and dealing out a lot of punishment he's making in your view mental errors that could hurt him later on. That's true. You don't follow a punch and then you don't let a punch. You see, he's holding him by the head. Once you throw hard shots, you grab him by the head and it takes all your juice out of your legs. Bo still doing most of the damage in these exchanges and landing at close range. It's deteriorating into a brawl. take Gonzalez's hand off the back of Bo's neck. Gonzalez has had a lot of amateur fights where he's had to hold by the rope, hold by the head, so he's in his in his element. If this fight goes four rounds, it's going to catch up with Bo. with the jab and following with the right hand. 
Gonzalez not yet finding the counterpunch opportunity he'd like to have. In that round, it looked like Riddick Bo wanted to send Gonzalez on a boat lift back to Havana. Come on, in your nose, blow it out your mouth. One more time, come on. That's it. Use your jab and set him up. He can't get away from your jab. Set him up for your hook. You can set him up for your right hand. Use that jab. And don't wait. Go right after him. Okay. Don't let him punch first. You got to go first. Riddick, Riddick Poe said he hasn't been hungry since, since that first Holyfield fight. Well, he looks hungry enough to eat a 238-pound opponent right here in one gulp. <laughs> Maybe he just wants to eat his heart. That's what Gonzalez said he was going to do to him. I haven't heard Eddie Futch so animated in the corner for a long time, so... Even this 84-year-old jockey is riding this big horse. You know, Eddie told me yesterday that there was a time when he worried about whether Bo really cared anymore. But he's decided that that's no longer a concern, that Bo is reinterested in his career, and therefore he, Eddie, is not wasting time trying to get him back to the heavyweight title. Gonzalez, he's weathered the storm. His jab is working now. If he doesn't get too overconfident, he can turn the momentum anytime. He's weathered the big storm. Gonzalez's corner telling in between rounds, use your left, go back to the jab, it's God's gift to you. Bo just missing with the right hand over the top. Quick punch, hey, hey, hold up, no, no, wait a minute. Quick punch on the belly, come on, come on. Now here's the familiar posture for Gonzalez. Leaning against the top rope, inviting Bo to come in. Bo is landing good right hands to the body. Though he's losing a lot of energy, those right hands to the body, he's throwing is going to take some energy away also. Again, the Eddie Futch prescription, when Gonzalez is in this position, forget his head, keep hammering the body. Now at this point, Riddick Bo should be a bit more conservative with his right hand. Hard jab by Bo. Get off that neck, Gonzalez. Come on, get off that neck. Gonzalez with a chance to be busy against a guy who's throwing a lot. Somehow it's just not in Jorge Luis Gonzalez to crank up a large punch output. He's mostly a one punch at a time guy. He's waiting around for one good shot, but let me tell you, he has enough power that one good shot could turn everything around. Perfect landing of the right hand for Bo. Gonzalez taking Bo's punches better now than was the case in round one. Then Gonzalez just did not expect Bo to have that kind of power early on. He's felt it now and sees it coming a little better, huh? That's right. Bo is starting to just bump into his shoulder and fall on the rope. Gonzalez, if he's in the kind of conditioning he's supposed to be in, weather the storm by fourth round, he can turn that corner. Bo has now got to start landing body punches, body punches, body punches. Not much fat on Bo tonight. You're right, Larry. He looks better than he has at any time since November of 92 when he took the title from Holyfield. I think Bo let this guy fool him into being over-aggressive too early. He should have allowed this fight to kind of materialize as he went on. Look at that jab knocking a 237-pound man backwards. This is the well-schooled bow we used to talk about, using that left hand and let thing, letting things happen after that. He was a dropout from that school for, the, for a couple of years, but he's gone back to school now. Use your left hand. This guy is nobody. Use your left hand. Box. He's got a, a, his eye. He's already shot. You're, you're okay. You're perfectly, perfectly okay. You're the one with the. I need the mouthpiece, man. You got it. Okay. All right. Let me push. Don't wait for him to leave. All right. Is it right about the head? Yeah. Get, get, get a little, little closer, don't, don't, uh, don't be too far back. All right. Look at that, let's go. Let's go, let's go. 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 Let's go
You saw on the graphic the wide margin by which Bo is outlanding Gonzalez and punched at numbers. Round four begins. It's a scheduled 12 rounds. Bo is doing an excellent job of spinning, bobbing and weaving. This guy, Gonzalez, is a trap fighter. If you don't get right back, you go to the left and you come back to the same position, you don't go to your left instead of your left, he'll catch you. Gonzalez came perilously close to landing that straight right a few moments ago. He has landed a couple of good jabs here, beginning well in round four. There's blood coming from Gonzalez's mouth. Both fighters hitting coming out of a clinch there, and both landed. Bo with a hard right hand to the top of the head and another to the chin, but this time Gonzalez doesn't wobble, just really backs Bo up against smelling, the top rope. Really, Bo is smelling some finishing now. He's smelling it. But if he doesn't finish him... Oh, but I'm telling you, once the guy starts to smell that kind of power, and knowing that he's living with punishment, it's hard to turn him out. Good straight left hand by Bo. Gonzalez having some difficulty now. And Bo landing constantly to Gonzalez's head. Referee, referee Mills Lane is looking deep into this now. He's not only watching the punches, he's watching the, the no return by... Jorge Gonzalez. Okay, come on. Bo is just beating him up inside without return. Okay, the major difference is Bo has been landing at good left jail. Gonzalez has been paying attention to the newspapers. He'll realize that he needs to worry about quick stoppage in a state still reeling from the death of Jimmy Garcia. Bo landing at will as Gonzalez leans against the ropes. Now Gonzalez tries to counter and Bo just thuds away. That right hand over the top is landing every time, George. This looks like the heavyweight champion of the world, Riddick Bo now. And that's coming from the heavyweight champion, Bo. Riddick Bo looks like the heavyweight champion of the world. Another landslide scoring round for Bo. And Gonzalez is taking quite a pounding as he sticks to his strategy of leaning against the ropes and throws very few punches in return. Bo risking disqualification there, and that was a stupid move. Exactly. And if I was a referee, would not allow him to get away with it. He's winning a fight. He doesn't need that kind of stuff. Shouldn't the referee have been there between them? Yep. So you got to be, you're right. Harold Letterman. La Larry, let me tell you something. I've got it 40 nothing, 40 36. Larry, let me tell you something. That's why we have that 10 second warning. At the 10 second warning, the referee moves in close. He's supposed to be between the two fighters, so nobody gets in that shot after the bell rings. Mills Lane wasn't there. Riddick Bowe fouled him. But on the other hand, Riddick Bowe is fighting an absolutely great fight so far. Yeah. I scored that a 10 8 round, incidentally. Well, he staggered him after the bell rang. I mean, you know, it could have been 10-8, but the stagger was after the bell. And no fewer than five Nevada State Athletic Commission officials gathered around Gonzalez's corner to peer at him as his seconds worked on it. Rick Bo is going about this in a workmanlike fashion. He goes back to the body, even after doing a lot of damage in the prior round. Give us your scorecard officially. Okay, Larry, once again, 40 to 36, four rounds to nothing, Riddick Bowe. One thing I don't understand is how Mills Lane can talk to Jorge Luis Gonzalez if the man doesn't speak English, and he keeps he keeps talking to him. But in any case, Riddick Bowe is fighting an absolutely great fight as I see it. He couldn't be doing any better. Harold, you know as well as we do, Gonzalez speaks a lot more English than he lets on. 
And Zalas starting to come to life a little bit in round five. Round four was dreadful for him. Bo landed 53 punches by punch stat numbers. Gonzalez landed six. And there's another rocket left hand by Riddick Bo. He's sharp tonight, George. I'm telling you, the, the missing ingredients has been that long left jab by Riddick Bo. Jorge Gonzalez has the reach advantage, but he doesn't use it. Stands back there and waits for one good shot. Boy, I believe he didn't go down. If I was the referee, I would not allow Jose, I mean, uh, Gonzalez to take that many right hands like that. I just wouldn't allow it. Hard to believe he didn't go down on that one. That was a shot. This wouldn't allow him to catch too many like that. Would you stop it on the next one? Yeah, if he gets caught like that and stands up like that, he's a brave fighter. It's going to take a lot more to get him down than what's necessarily gets it, what ordinarily gets a guy down. Don't let him get killed. Can you let heavyweights go a little bit longer than no, fighters in lower weight classes? Probably. No, no, you just don't. Heavyweights can do more damage. Well, but very few heavyweights throughout history, George, have suffered serious head injuries in the ring in fights, maybe cumulatively over a career. But there's very few that have suffered serious injuries. I well, like well we let's not we, see one tonight. Yeah, we don't want any history to be made tonight. Hard right hand by Gonzalez, but not a lot of snap in his punches now. So Riddick Bo is hitting good hard shots, but he's not knocking this guy out. When you incur that much punishment, that's when the damage sits in. Riddick Bo is starting to blow his nose a little bit. Good body shot. Riddick Bow with the right hand to the ribcage. Gonzalez still fighting. Wide open for that right hand. He takes another right hand shot. Wobbles away. Lane looking closely. Fifth round coming to a close. This guy's got the right height, height for Riddick Bow. Comfortable with that height. He's going to eat right one more right hand before the bell rings. No, he's not. This fight could be stopped between rounds. It's conceivable. Okay, you don't run. Okay? Well, listen. Bo, in your nose real deep and out your mouth. In your nose again. Out your mouth. Put your arms on the Don't wait on him. You've got to be first. Okay. Okay. Come on, You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. Put water on his head. Wash off his face. Move your legs. Gonzalez is standing up to awful punishment, which speaks to the fact that he has everything in his life at stake here. He's a, this is a fight that he has wanted for his entire life. He staked his whole life on it. So he is being as brave as it's possible to be in the face of this onslaught. But he's being profoundly ineffective, too. In round five, Bo landed 34 punches. Gonzalez, who landed six punches in the preceding round, only landed nine in round five. Gonzalez is lasting strictly on heart now. Has nothing else left but his heart. And if he's able to land one of those good right hands, Boy, that heart is a really get pumped up. Gonzalez, by and large, trains himself. Our interpreter, Hector Garcia, says he's getting no useful advice in the corner between rounds. So he's pretty much on his own in here. And for the first time, Bo shows some signs of running out of gas. Well, he's just tired. And sometimes at one point, it looked like on, a fight is going to go on and on. on, on, on you got to pace on, yourself. You got to do something other than throw punches. So Bo hasn't put that in his repertoire yet. Bob and Weave touch, touch and go. It's the only thing missing. And when you're a good puncher like he is, but yet not a devastating knockout puncher, you got to learn how to mix it up a little bit. And of course, while Gonzalez gets, according to our interpreter, Hector Garcia, a little advice in his corner between rounds, Bo's listening to Eddie Futch. On paper, that looks like a big advantage. Ooh, right there it hand. goes. That 
should do it. That should do it. That's the first time Gonzalez has been down as a pro. And if he gets up from this, he fools me. Now, Mills Lane doesn't bother to complete the count. Another terrific right hand shot for Riddick Bowe. And I got to tell you, Larry, I wasn't sure we'd ever see him look this good again. He needed the challenge. He was getting too many easy opponents. He was getting careless. You can't give a, a feed a fighter setups and setups and setups, a good fighter, and expect him to stay sharp. And this brings him back to the top. This is what we saw in him in Holyfield 1. A, a magnificently schooled fighter for a big man, and he took an opponent to school tonight. One thing about it, I'm very shocked and surprised of the amateurish habits that Jorge Gonzalez had. had. It's a good point. Like a rank amateur. It didn't look like a professional fighter at all in my it's mind. It's a very good point, George. He's a great amateur, but he was an amateur for too many years. And when you're an amateur for that long, it's hard to break bad habits. Okay. Never a great pro. Well, let's take another look at the knockout combo. It's uh, a standard left and right, and the right hand is a beauty. Gonzalez actually kind of stepping up forward into that right hand, George. So for the fans at home, they'll always remember wherever there's a lot of smoke, there's, smoke. there's a whole lot more smoke. <laughs> All right, and on the last angle, we'll show you the knockout in real speed. So you can get a sense of the precision of this right hand blow. See Gonzalez lean a little bit forward and just take it. He's had just too many of them all night. That overhand right that Bo has been landing consistently over and over just took his toll. Riddick, Bro Riddick Bo says thanks to his God. And right now, we're going to go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars on this. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mills Lane reaches the count of 10 at 1 minute and 50 seconds of round number 6. The winner by knockout victory and still WBO World Heavyweight Champion, Riddick Big Daddy. Well, George, the strategy is to string enough impressive performances together for Bo to return to the level of people's champion. You said earlier. He looks like the heavyweight champ of the world. I think the, the probably three of mistakes has been, listen, you match this guy with too many boxers, guys who are going to move. He's not a uh, what you call a true aggressor. You match him up with a guy big enough to try and exchange punches with him, he's going to look good like that every time. It's been Final been a matchmaker's uh, 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 disaster with Bo earlier. Too many guys who was trying to just run, run, run. Heck of a point. This was the ideal opponent tonight. You look at final punch stat numbers and you see the enormous margins Bo was rolling up in punches thrown, in punches landed, uh, and proceeding from there to the percentage. Riddick just completely dominating the fight. And among those 188 landed punches, a uh, fairly equal proportion of jabs and power shots. He did it all in there. The WBO looks like they got a good champion. 99 total jabs landed by Bo, only 35 by Gonzalez. It was a mismatch all the way, and Riddick Bo's best performance by far since his loss to Evander Holyfield in November of 1993. Let's go up to Larry Merchant in the ring. Uh, Riddick Bo, congratulations on an outstanding performance. Was the hate between you that you two fighters, is is that what fueled you to this performance? No, not really. I told you, you know, earlier I wanted to recapture what I once had uh, the first fight event, Holy Filling. Jorge Gonzalez presented an opportunity for me to step up to the plate and to be at my best. Looking back, why had you lost your focus? Was it because you didn't have a real challenge in front of you? No, I wouldn't say it was a real challenge. I um, started doing other things, uh, going to South Africa. Try to get the people over there and things of that nature. And I somewhat got away from my uh, my training program, but that, that's no excuse. I'm a world champion, so I should conduct myself like that and to stay in shape. And it was a costly experience, but a learning experience. And uh, I'm going to be my best from now on. What did it feel like for you in the ring tonight to, to be in control, to show that mastery, to be able to use your left hand, 
the way that we have seen you in the past. Well, you know, you guys said earlier in the interview, I wanted to see a left hand pop, 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 me get right back on the pop, pop, pop. And um, I wasn't here to please tonight. I wanted to do it for the people. A lot of people uh, despise Jorge Gonzalez. And I wanted to, you know, uh, impress you. I wanted you to say, well, Riddick Bowe is back. Opposed to saying, Riddick Bowe doesn't have what he used to have. He's faded. With all the venom he was spewing at you uh, before this fight, did anything happen in the ring that was untoward? Could you see him at any time saying, okay, now we're just fighting? Uh, pretty much. Uh, his jab was quicker than I anticipated, so he hit me a couple of times. But other than that, I pretty much did what I wanted to do. Like I told you, I would do apply the pressure, use the jab, work his body, and eventually he would fold, and that's what he did. All right, let me take Eddie Futch here for a while. Eddie, I know you've been disappointed that perhaps uh, a fighter who would be your greatest masterpiece wasn't performing in that way for a while. Give us your assessment of him tonight. Well, uh, tonight, uh, he, he showed that fire again, the fire that I was accustomed to seeing on his way up to the title. And uh, for, for a little while there, I was, I was wondering whether we'd ever get it back. But tonight, he showed me that he could. All right, what's, what do you think is in the future, uh, Riddick? Well, to be quite honest, I would like to fight Evander Holyfield again. He's a guy that I really, truly believe that brings the best out in me. And I think um, if I were to fight Holyfield again, I would surpass his victory tonight. Thank you very much, Riddick Bowe, and back to you guys at ringside. All right, thanks very much, Larry. Well, I've been one of his most severe critics, George. He had a chance via matchmaking, as you point out, to look terrific tonight, and he did. Now, before we get to the subject of Holyfield, let me cover this real fast. He has a heavyweight title of sorts. You have the linear heavyweight championship. Would you consider fighting Riddick? No. Okay, that's an answer. Now, what about the possibility of Bo Holyfield 3? That makes some sense, doesn't oh, boy, it? Probably the most promising and decorative fight around. It would be a beauty. Okay. You got two guys who are not going to quit. Quit, and uh, Holyfield is made to order for Bo and vice versa. Yeah, it, it makes for a lot of excitement as we've seen before. Let me give you another possibility. Bo against Lennox Lewis. We've been trying to make that fight around here for years. That one's still interesting, isn't it? Riddick Bo, if he stays in this kind of condition, I would advise all fighters and heavyweights stay away from Riddick Bo. <laughs> Don't join me in the so, grade against don't mess with Riddick Bow. So if Lennox comes around tonight, you're going to tell him there are plenty of other guys to fight without having to mess with Riddick Bow, huh? Dub, leave Riddick Bow alone. Let him uh, go out into the sunset. Lennox, don't listen to him. We may want the excitement. Let's go back up to the ring and Larry Merchant. All right. Uh, Jorge, uh, tell us, are you okay now? That's what we uh, want to know particularly. Yeah, I'm okay. Do okay. you feel okay? Uh, tell us what you thought happened in there tonight. ¿Qué tú piensas de lo que pasó esta noche? Pues lo que pasa es como 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 que puede pasar cualquier cosa porque perdió y me salió tan mal a mí hoy. He says that he had a bad day and you know any fighter can lose. Was he better than you thought he was? Tú pensabas él es mejor que de lo que tú pensabas. No, Luis Boyle que siempre ha sido un peleador en la distancia esa, en la distancia corta ha sido un buen peleador siempre. Y que siempre es un peleador bueno en esa, en esa distancia. Yo acepté esa, esa distancia porque hoy como, como uno, como el cuerpo es así, hoy no me sentí muy fuerte, ¿me entiendes? He says so, that he says that you know he's he's tough on the inside, and that uh, you know today you know it just wasn't as he had an off day today. What is the difference between the Riddick Bow you see you saw tonight and the Riddick Bow you defeated as an amateur? He says Riddick's got you know now it's 12 rounds and Riddick's got good condition. He's a good condition fighter. Uh, what do you see for your future now? Will you continue to fight? Or was this a, you, you staked everything on this fight. How big a disappointment is it and how will it affect your career? Dice que si tú vas a seguir peleando, porque tú esperaste mucho con esta pelea, si tú vas a seguir peleando, y uh, ¿qué, ¿qué tú vas a hacer con tu carrera? Yo le digo así, exactamente, porque yo le digo, como le dije anteriormente, una derrota. La tengo cualquiera, un día malo tengo cualquiera. Yo hoy, hoy no me voy a sentir perfectamente bien. He says, you know, anybody can, anybody can lose, you know, and that he's going to continue to fight. He'll be back. Was the bad blood between you two, did it influence the fight at all in how you fought this fight? El odio que le, tú, tú le tenías influyó la pelea. No, yo, en parte también, 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 en parte también, sí, también, porque cuando uno tiene odio, uno trata, entonces, de matar, la, o sea, de controlar el tren de pelea. He says that, yeah, when you get a lot of hate, you tend to, you know, uh, try to be too aggressive, and you know, sometimes it doesn't work out for you. Thank you very much. Boys. Thanks very much, Larry. Well, George, I know that you think trainers have limited value, particularly for fighters like you, but 
This guy needs a trainer, doesn't he? He had no strategy whatsoever. He didn't even know what to do. He needs someone in his corner to show him and tell him what to do in a boxing match. He's got, got some basics. Dundee or something like that. He's got some gifts, some yeah, basics. He's got a lot of heart. He didn't quit. Although he was behind taking a big beating, he stayed in there. That heart is great. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to fight Bill Cosby. We <laughs> signed up for another rematch. I think I can beat Bill. Yeah. You know, I, I think you'll I have do, several significant believe. advantages against Bill. Just don't let him hit you with his wallet, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Larry Merchant rejoins us, and we get ready for his closing comments. Larry, your final take on Riddick Bowe. Well, Riddick Bowe has called himself Big Daddy. He's got four kids. He's expecting another, and he gave himself a bit of a Father's Day present here to, tonight. And I think he couldn't have gotten a better one. Um, you never want to see any performer, whether he's an artist or a writer or a prize fighter, uh, fall off from his best, not even aware of it when it's happening. It, it happens to all of us. And it was good to see him animated and feeling that this is what he does best and will never do anything in his life quite as good as this. And to come back there as a young man when, in effect, he has achieved all of his dreams. He's been a heavyweight champion. He's made more money than his grandchildren will be able to spend. But he found himself again tonight, and I'm glad for him and for Eddie Futch, his trainer. As I said before, I thought Riddick Bowe would become his great masterpiece, much the way Mike Tyson was Customato's. And maybe there's hope for that still. That would be an exciting thing to watch for sure. All right, we'll have a final word here on what happened in the ring here at the MGM Grand tonight. But first, let's look ahead to a couple of upcoming programs in the weeks ahead here on HBO. I'm doing a piece about the skinhead violence. It is dangerous. That's true. This is not a game. If these people discover who you are... I won't get caught. They love me. All we need is the evidence. You get it? What are you doing in this place? Go! Quick! Slater! The HBO original movie, The Infiltrator, premieres Saturday, June 24th, only on HBO. She played at Wimbledon for 21 years. She has 20 championship titles, the most in the history of the tournament. She has played there for 22 years. She's won 18 championship titles, including nine singles titles, the most ever. HBO's record at Wimbledon just got better. Martina Navratilova joins Billie Jean King in our Wimbledon coverage. The games begin Monday, June 26th, live on HBO. Back live at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, where tonight Riddick Bowe relentlessly pounded Jorge Luis Gonzalez through the first six rounds of this scheduled 12-round heavyweight fight until he finally scored a clear knockout of Gonzalez at 1 minute 50 seconds of the sixth round. That, the only knockdown of Jorge Luis Gonzalez's professional career, and it would have taken him quite some time to get himself ready to go again. So that fight ended at exactly the moment when it should. Next on HBO, on the East Coast, stay tuned for The Getaway, followed by Beverly Hills Cop 3 on the West Coast. And join us July 30 for Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel, a unique magazine show that takes an investigative, informative, and entertaining look at the issues, events, and personalities in sports. The only show of its kind, only on HBO. World Championship Boxing returns in August, featuring two Southpaw fighters, Fernell Whitaker, one of boxing's pound-for-pound vests, makes his first welterweight title defense against top-ranked contender Gary Jacobs, live August 26, right here on HBO. So now for Larry Merchant, George Foreman, and Harold Letterman, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long from the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. The executive producer of HBO Sports is Ross Greenberg. Tonight's telecast of World Championship Boxing was produced by Rick Bernstein and directed by Mark Payton. The feature producers were David Leapson and Brian McDonald. The associate producers, David Hoffman and Kendall Reed. Assistants to the producer, Jonathan Crystal and Thomas Odelfelt. The production manager was John McCallie. And the technical supervisor was John McCracken.
This has been a presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions.